-hmm. This is dynamic dispatch. So let's see some of the benefits of sending messages to objects rather than calling functions statically. And if you understand this, if you understand this difference, you understand object orientation. You understand the benefits of object orientation, and you will see that it has nothing to do with classes. It has classes. nothing to do with yeah. inheritance. Yeah. You can use inheritance, you can use classes to achieve polymorphism, to achieve this method, dynamic dispatch of methods. But there are other ways as well, and they are both object oriented. This, the differences are language features, how to achieve it. But the idea is to send messages to objects. Oh, right. Yep. That's object orientation. All right. So what are the benefits of that? First, let's create an example here. Let's say we have some code. Let's say we have some client code. Say we are creating files and uploading files to service. Mm -hmm. Like what? Dropbox. OK. So let's say we have some client code here that the user will create a file, will enter all the details, and press a button like create this file and upload it. So we get here a callback, let's say. It finished creating file. Now we want to upload this file. That's the, the logic here, the application logic. When the user finishes creating a file, we want to upload it to Dropbox. OK. Now, Dropbox probably provides you some libraries, some frameworks on how to do so. Yeah. So then we have some code outside the client. Outside the client, we have some libraries or frameworks and so on. And maybe there's a function there, like upload to Dropbox. Okay, and you pass a file here. And you will upload Dropbox. Fantastic. And we come here and say upload to Dropbox file file. So as soon as the user finished creating the file, we upload to Dropbox. Right now, your boss comes to you and say, "All right, some clients want to upload to Google Drive." Okay. Yep. Because they don't use Dropbox. Okay, and then we go there and we get the library from Drive. That's another library. Let's say upload to Google Drive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we need to make a decision here. Which one should we call? Should we upload to Dropbox or Google Drive? We need to have some logic here to decide, should I upload to both? Should I upload to just one? Yes. Exactly. Now, when you had only one service, that was fine, just calling the method directly, statically. But now when you have two services, you need to decide. How are we going to decide which yeah, method to which call one here? To, exactly. Maybe we could pass up an extra parameter now. Like, right. <laughs> should upload to Dropbox, Boolean, mm -hmm. and then we can pass around and say, if should upload to Dropbox, else do something else. Now we are, every time there's a new service, you will see that you will have to add more context and pass <laughs> this context around. Yes. And that's the problem with this. It doesn't scale well, because yeah. every time there's a new functionality, a new change in the system, you need to update the clients. You need to update client code. And we don't want exactly. this always. Sometimes we want to be able to add new services without breaking clients. Other solutions is to add a, for example, an upload type in them. Yeah. Like a file upload type. And we switch over the type and in case Dropbox cleaner because it forces you to handle all the cases so here yeah. it's drive upload to google drive and so on yeah but you end up with the same problem yes because your boss and oh some people want to put the, to upload it to our own s3 servers uh -huh. now you need to add a new case to the upload type enum and you break clients because the clients need to you need to update client code again. So every time there's a new service, you break clients. Right. So the open close principle is violated here. The system is not open for extension because every time you add a new service, you break clients. 
Absolutely. You need to modify existing code rather than adding new behavior without changing existing code. So, and here we would have S3, for example, and then we upload S3. So every time you need to update clients, and breaking changes, the code wouldn't even compile because you need to handle all cases of the enum. So booleans or enums and using if statements or switch statements, they are coupling with concrete implementation details. So the clients are always, or they can always be in a situation where there's an update in the library that breaks the clients. Exactly. You have state, right? So <laughs> you have to deal with that state, switch it or check it. So this is the F of O solution mm -hmm. before object orientation. Now, what can we do with object orientation now? Can we solve this problem? Now let's think in the OO terms here. Okay, we have our same did finish creating function. So this is the client code. Let's say it's a view controller. So the user finished creating the file, press a button, and now we need to decide okay. which service to call. Oh, it's inside a class. But we have the same problem. So this is not object-oriented code. This is procedural code because it gets data, it makes a decision, and then call concrete static functions around. It's not open for extension, even though it's using a class. So just adding a class keyword doesn't make it object-oriented. Inheriting from UI view controller doesn't make it object oriented. So it's not about class or inheritance. Inheritance. Now, how can we solve this problem with object orientation? Any idea in the chat? <laughs> Guys, we've seen us a thousand times. <laughs> do this. <laughs> so there are many ways to do this in an object oriented way. So let's use here, instead of calling the function directly, and every time there's a new service, we need to add a new function and a new case in the enum, mm -hmm. we can create an abstract interface. Be, for example, a protocol. In other languages, we call them an interface. Or it could be a class, it could be even be a struct. But we define an abstraction that is not coupled with the implementation details, it's not coupled with Dropbox, it's not coupled with Firebase, with Google Drive, S3, and so on. We can call it an upload service, for example. Mm -hmm. All we need, all we need is to upload a file. So we can define an abstract interface. Fine upload file. Now, how it's going to be uploaded, it doesn't matter to the client. Or if you want it to be open for extension, it shouldn't matter. When you want it to be open for extension, you need an abstract interface that hides implementation details. Now, our client, for example, we could inject a service into the client. And the client can just say, service.upload file. That's it. So the client doesn't depend on S3 details, doesn't depend, doesn't need to switch or use if statements to decide which method to call. We just send a message to another object, objects sending message to other objects. So through dynamic dispatch, we achieve polymorphism because you can have different implementations of this protocol. For example, we have here the Dropbox. You can create the Dropbox upload, whoop, upload service. That will implement the upload and do whatever it needs to upload Dropbox. Now, when you're creating the view controller, you pass here, service, Dropbox. 
Right. Now we're uploading to Dropbox based on the user settings. If the user wants to upload to Dropbox, it's going to go to a Dropbox. If the user wants to upload to Drive, it will use a different instance. And look how we can now add new services without breaking the client. Yes. So based on user settings, we inject the specific service that makes sense to the user preferences. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, the same with yeah. S3. That's the big difference. Only a function, concrete function, that creates this coupling between the client and a specific function, or calling a function on an object, sending a message to an object. This allows polymorphism, allow you to replace that function. And you cannot you can do this without classes. This could be just a closure, for example. Mm -hmm. This could be just a closure. You could have literally a closure here. That takes a file and returns void because that's the signature we have here. A function that takes a file and returns void. So if you're using protocol, if you're using class, if you're using closures, as long as you have these pointer to functions that can be replaced at runtime without breaking clients, you have ob object orientation, sending messages to objects rather than calling functions statically. That's exactly. the big difference. And this is object ori orientation, sending messages to objects, which allows polymorphism, modularity, dependency inversion. Yeah, so this thing should be the goal, exactly. Like polymorphism, you know, dependency inversion. The goal shouldn't be to say, be dogmatic and use protocols, you know, or classes and like, no, I don't use tracks. I use them only for data types, you know, like this sort of thing. No, it's like you want your system to be flexible. And these are the things that make your system flexible.